All right, so the next talk is your defense is flawed. It's only kind of your fault, which I, I mean, this is a talk, and it was very similar to, uh, it related, but on a different topic that, that uh, Bo was talking about. And, uh, you know, I've just seen this for like over 20 years that, that, that there's a, you know, there's just some basic stuff that we're not doing. Oh, I'm going to give you this when you're done, so when I'm done talking, which that could be like 15 minutes, but. Um, but, you know, one of the key things is that you have these vendors and, and, and there's a lot of uh, executives that sort of buy into the vendor sales pitch and, and, and it's very frustrating for us as information security professionals to, okay, <laughs> this has never happened before, <laughs> but it's, it's, um, it's just very frustrating for us as information security prof professionals. So. Um, I just can't wait to hear the story that you have to tell. I love the suit. I love the mustache. Although, I think Bo, he did win the uh, best mustache thing in 2013 besides London. So, um, could it, could, at least you made some effort. I would have liked, you know, coming from November, you could have really grown one out though. But, <laughs> Anyway, I've seen the suit, I've seen the props, I can't wait to see the talk. Bryson. Welcome, I, I didn't hear you come in. Good, good help is so hard to find these days, isn't it? Oh. So welcome to our annual extraordinary meeting of the League of the Shmoo. You can clap. <laughs> oh, but I, I apologize. This, this is a fire talk. Please. We must warm our guests. <laughs> and I, I think our judges look a little thirsty. Could you, could you please? So ladies and gentlemen, what we will be discussing today is how we will continue to keep the hoi polloi in their proper place. That, in fact, is our, our goal. Is it not as a league? So I'm going to lose the mustache. Somebody gets a win there. And I won't continue to butcher the king's English. So the state of the industry. Meat pies. We like the taste of dogs, kittens, orphans. <laughs> Their tears really bring the flavor out. <laughs> but alas, we as an industry seem to not want meat pies anymore. We wish to eat healthy. Mrs. Lovett is heavily disappointed. So my hypothesis for the league, life, like death and taxes, is inevitable. But so is exploitation. Given an infinite period of time, exploitation will happen. And so my hypothesis is, though, exploitation is access. But the purpose of the campaign, the purpose, the motivation of that evil, dastardly villain is the code they drop next. And so I submit to the league that space is discreet. Who has heard of weird machines? Who knows what a weird machine is? Okay, a few of you. And who of you have read Halver Flake's talk, or excuse me, paper, IEEE paper on this? All right, a handful. So this is, I think this is important, and I intentionally provided a synopsis because his paper is academically and mathematically quite dense. Uh, and awesome. And awesome, thank you. So what a weird machine is, is this concept that a program has an expected and unexpected state. And so what exploitation is, is trying to derive an input so that I can bring it into an unexpected state. That is a weird machine in summary. 
the relevance of this and what his paper goes through is he talks about the fact is computers are fundamentally finite state machines. I move from this state to this state through different data and variables and inputs. And what he mathematically proves within an abstract sense of a finite state machine is that I can make that unexploitable. Um, and so I've already been talking to him about the fact that we need to take that to the next level because while that works in the abstract, it turns out reality rarely is such a kind mistress. Computers, in terms of how they actually operate, operate with memory. And memory can be in any infinite number of states. And so the machine at that level is depending on the operating system to manage those resources to provide that back. And so that was, that was where I saw the fault in his abstraction. So the summary of a weird machine is complexity favors an attacker. Non-exploitability is the exception. Not getting owned is the exception. And it turns out, as a developer, complexity is frighteningly easy to achieve. You find yourself there way faster than you want, and the villain is there waiting. So the, way, the reason we have the meat pies is that there are these inherent trade-offs in the defense industry. Excuse me, defensive industry. I know we're in DC. It just comes off the tongue. <laughs> I want something that's easy to deploy. I want something that is simple. I want something that is stable. And oh, by the way, I want something that theoretically works. And yet this is the traditional CISO approach of trying to balance all of those trade-offs, hoping they don't plummet upon that newfangled aeroplane to the ground. But tradition is puffycock. This is the architecture of pretty much every computer on the planet. User level with applications, operating system that manages the kernel, the kernel then that manages the firmware down to the hardware. This is why everything is the way it is. Because if I'm, if I'm going to design this newfangled, amazing defensive product, where do I want to be? Well, of course, I need to be at the kernel. Because this way I can see everything that's happening. I have godlike powers over this machine. It will bend to my will. For is that not what this industrial age has taught us? Bring the machines to heel? But the problem is that when you start taking that from a proof of concept into an enterprise product, I need stability. Because most people, most, don't want to put a product into their company that breaks the machines. Turns out users don't like that. And telling them to turn it off and turn it back on again does solve that blue screen of death. But you don't want to get that many phone calls. And this is where we see the challenge of the half-life of defensive products. As they reach this point of enterprise stability, and as they reach that tipping point of deployment into the real world, now there's something that the attackers are aware of. OK. I know that's out there. So what am I going to do? It's just going to become a part of my test matrix. Anything I build, I'm not going to release until I already know how to handle whatever you're doing on that computer from a defensive perspective. And so if the attacker can see you, this is this now where I get to call out artificial intelligence and machine learning for the derogatory sense of them. So I don't know if that's like extra points in the other direction. But if the attacker can see you, <laughs> they can deceive you, they can disable you, and they can avoid you. Those are your eyes. All of these highfalutin concepts of machine learning, heuristics, artificial intelligence, which I've now summarized as analytis, an, an analyticitis. So that's a new word I've just created. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly getting more information. And if only I could use this information to find the attackers, and I, could, and I can get all of these things, and then the computer thinks for itself, and it moves on. Except, what data is it getting? We've just identified these things that we're building only can analyze what they can see. If I don't have the data, what kind of conclusion am I going to draw? And so artificial intelligence, machine learning, and these advanced heuristics that we continue to build 
are literally beautiful castles that grow up into the sky built on quicksand that falls over because it's rotted foundation. Villains! <laughs> Thanks, that was a good laugh. <laughs> Villains starts with exploitation, but exploitation isn't the point anyway. Exploitation grants me access. That's all. And there are other ways to get access without exploitation. What I do next is the point. The code that I drop next is why I gained access to begin with. If I'm going to pull off my bank heist, if I'm going to rob the train, it's that code that I put next that does it. That's how I pivot. That's how I execute what I want to do. That's how I steal. So what do they drop? Payloads, I would offer, really only have two key categories. Communications, and then the functions of what they're trying to do on any particular endpoint. Communications. I have yet to see a piece of software that has defied the laws of physics. No matter what moonshot you throw at it, it only can use the protocols, the wires, and the communications that are enabled already in your enterprise. They can't bring anything else to the table. And then what they actually do on those endpoints. Well, if you think about it, there's only so many things you would want to do. And so I, my hypothesis here is that while exploitation is an infinite, unsolvable space across time, what happens next is not. And that as large as this space might be, and as many permutations as there might be, it's still a finite space that we can solve. And now this gives a red team the ability to work through that space to really see what are they defending against. So one of my challenges, and this is really a question to the audience, is I'm looking for data to back this theory up. I have talked to multiple threat intelligence partners. All of the data they collect do not allow you to establish that this is a discrete space. They have IPs, they have geographies, they have IOCs, they have hashes, they have all sorts of information. I didn't find anything or anyone that actually was collecting the metadata to be able to draw that conclusion of what communications and what are all the different functional elements that are in that program or malware. Vanity will kill you. So this is all from Dr. Mordecai Guri. And I just wanted this to end on a delightful nightmare note. He found ways to both exfil and talk to computers through router and hard drive LEDs, just the simple LEDs, infrared, thermal manipulation of a machine that you could then read that temperature and determine what was happening, and then computer fans themselves. I included the link here to his page where he has links to all of the YouTube demonstrations of these and actually far more of these. But I thought that this was important to really demonstrate just how creative it is possible to continue to, you know, this is, this is what we're up against. And so please get on your carriage and ride off with the dragons because that's all folks. Are there any Step questions? Step right up. Step right up. Ask your question. Ask your question. <laughs> so you talked about ML, but you didn't even mention adversarial inputs. Why not? What do you mean? Hacking the ML. Yeah, so, so someone has ML, they're building it, right? The, the primary attack on that is incorporate inputs to direct their ML into it. And they didn't even touch on that. So I was bored just. Speaking of the fact that machine learning and artificial intelligence were built on, a, on, a, on sensors that are going to inherently blind them, and so the data is irrelevant. But you are true. One of the other ways to defeat AI and ML is that if I feed it poor data over time, it's going to start to draw the wrong conclusions. Um, but yeah, that, that's more corollary to, to what I was saying. What's that? 
child learning. Can I elaborate on what the discrete space of a threat is? Okay, so that, that's, that's what I was trying to explain where I was talking about the panoply of communications and function modules. So if I look at that, what are all the different ways that something can communicate, right? Whether that's HTTP, HTTPS, HTTPS with steganography, DNS, FTP, SMB, blah, blah, blah. All of those protocols that are enabled both internally and externally are all pivot points or ways for me to talk because at the end of the day, whatever code I put down, I need to talk to. Unless I'm doing something destructive like DDoS, in which case it doesn't matter, but for code that I'm traditional malware, it goes in, it does something, and it communicates out. And then what does it do? What are those modules, right? Well, keylogger, screen grab, credential stealing, particular programs. That is also, I would argue, is a finite list of things. And then together, that's the entire space of what is possible for an attacker. Uh, yes, again, you with the weird hair. The slow and steady attack versus the finite time period, so the, the infinitely patient attacker, they're still dropping the same code. And the ability to ID that actually enables the slow attack to be on the same footing as the fast attack. So how are you detecting anomalies, or how are you, asserting, like, how are you finding these things over an infinite period of time when it runs into the noise? What's the solution? <laughs> Um, how do you find these things? So the holy grail of computer security is how do I find anomalous behavior? That's a great question. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, like what kind of information would that contain? Uh, not malware, uh, username, password, group, or whatever. So, yeah, that, that starts to meta-tag that to what were the functions of what they accomplished, right? So then I can start to backwards into that um, to determine what was dropped, what was that, you know, the details of that malware, breaking it down into the communications and capabilities. Um, how could we automate that so that you could look at entire classes with that information already extracted? No. All right, that was the last question. Thank you. God, these microphones are noisy. All right, would you like to start? Sure. So um, I thought it was a, a great presentation, and um, I appreciate the, I, the notion that you answered some of the questions I asked in the, in the audience uh, during my keynote, so thanks for that. Um, and, and I think the, the other thing that you did is you asked the audience a, a really important question, and that was um, for the data to, to actively participate. And I think in a conference like this, it, that kind of engagement um, is where we really see strides being made. So it was a really good presentation. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, I, I wrote a lot down. So <laughs> minus one for the British spelling of defense. I didn't get it that you were trying to be British until like poppycock or the, I don't know, meat or pudding pie, something like that. So uh, yeah, we're in America and there's a giant flag behind you of America. So spell it right, buddy. Okay, plus three for the costume. Lovely, lovely. Plus one for extra props. What is that, a fireplace? I can feel the heat, Whew. and uh, plus one for the brown liquor. Thank you. This this does actually count. Uh, minus one for the phrase "the tears of orphans." What even was that? The tears of orphans salt. The I don't even know. It, yeah, but you know what? It, it was the tears of orphans that spoke to me and caused you to lose a point. And, <laughs> 
Uh, plus one for uh, bringing up weird machines in Halbert's paper in a uh, cognizant way, so that was good. Um, plus one for the concept, getting across the concept, complexity is easy to achieve when you're a developer and when you're a deployer and et cetera, et cetera. And that's really the state that we're in right now, and that's reality. Um, had to give you the minus three for the three buzzwords, machine learning, AI, and heuristics was your other one. Mm -mm. Um, but I gave you a plus one for analysticitis. Anal analysticitis. Analy analysticitis. An analyticitis. Analyticitis. I, look, I gave you a point. Take the point, okay? Just take it. Um, okay, subtracted a point for rotted foundation of quicksand. What kind of beaches are you talking about here? That doesn't make any sense. Um, also subtracted a point when you said that, you know, exploitation always, def or you can't defy the laws of physics, but I mean, yo, row hammer, okay, anyway. Okay, so if you were following along, that was a plus eight and a minus seven for a base total of one. I did give you a plus three for the mustache. However, you were almost at a four total. That was gonna be your score. But I subtracted one for all of the weird audience plants, plants asking you questions. Then that, that got you down to a three total. So, you know, let it be organic next time. You were doing fine. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's me. All right. I, I just think this has been, I mean, and we're not even done yet. This has been, like, I love the costumes. So, I don't know, plus three for the costumes, right? in the fireplace. So years ago, I think it was maybe the second or third fire talks that we did. We had somebody, and I'm blanking on the name now, but they created this fireplace. And we just thought it was cute, and so we used it. But then there's this entire thread of, of people within the information security community that called it, uh, what did they call it? Fireside Talks. So, so it was really just fire talks, but then, you know, there's this, there's all these people that call it fireside talks. So, but I don't care. You can call it whatever you want as, as, as long as we all have a good time. So, okay. So plus three, just costume, everything. So I, I'm actually, I don't know, you gave a plus one, but I'm going to give a minus one because as a, as a beard sort of guy, I would have appreciated for this talk a real mustache. But I understand that, but, but I understand that some men aren't capable of doing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just Joe joking, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and then I think Katie had a lot of the same points. It, there were some plants, so that... I, I didn't ask them to do that. Oh, all right, all right, all right. They were not plants. Okay, they, they were real questions. But you might be able to my fault. that point back into my glass. Did you, you hear guys said no when he asked again? I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like your own guy that is like trying to, no. He's wearing a grim t-shirt. <laughs> no, um, but I just thought it was just, uh, just a very excellent look at kind of the problems that we have today. And, you know, we need to kind of look past that and take things a little, I, I don't know. This gets like I keep on getting back to Bo's talk, but just because it was the first one, you always like remember the first one. But I don't know if Bo's going to win or not, but whatever. Um, <laughs> no, he's not. Um, I, I, I just thought like like there there's so much that's sold to the average person, you know, and um, and we really need uh, like we as a community really need to look past that and we need to talk to those same folks and tell them that no it's not really this way so um and and also like plus 3 like i love the slides too so it's really nice there but except for that spelling error yeah. <laughs> but they were pr they were nice they were slides beautiful. though all right but Bryson thank you 
Wonderful talk. Can't wait to hear more from you. Thanks.